Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to Only Analog. So, as you've probably guessed, today I'm out shooting with my Exacta VX1000 and my Exacta Varex or Varex 2A. So, if you've watched the last video, you'll know how I came to acquire these cameras. Uh, if you want to go and check that out, you can click the link just at the top here. Uh, if you didn't watch that video, these are the two cameras in question. Now, this is the Exacta VX1000 and this is the Exacta Varex or Varex 2A. Now, I actually got this one from a local charity shop. Uh, there's a lovely lady in there who runs the charity shop and she actually gave me this camera. And this one I picked up from a camera shop um, and bought the lens, the Domi Plan lens, off of eBay. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about these in a sec. What we're going to do today as we run through the video, we're going to talk about some specs, uh, some of the history of the exact cameras, and we're going to talk a little bit about the lenses as well, why I chose the dummy plan lens for the Varex 2A, um, and we're going to do a little comparison against the Carl Zeiss Tessar lens as well. So I've got some fresh Kodak Gold loaded in to the VX1000, and some Agfa APX100 loaded in to the Varex 2A. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before we get started, just for your reference, all of the colour shots you'll see today are through the Carl Zeiss lens and all of the black and white shots are through the dummy plan. So today I'm venturing around a few locations that I like to visit when testing cameras. I know a few of you will definitely recognise a few of these from past videos. I'm also going to mention that all the shots you see today are very basic scans. They're about as out of the camera as they can possibly be without too many adjustments and very minimal sharpness adjustments. The reason I chose to do this was because I thought it would become more apparent on how well each lens performs when compared to each other. And the results may surprise you. Obviously the two stocks that I'm using today do have a different ISO rating, but in an attempt to keep it as fair as possible I kept my apertures the same and changed the shutter speeds accordingly. So as you probably now know, today we have the Carl Zeiss, which is a 50mm f2.8 Tessa lens, and the Dummy Plan 50mm f2.8. The reason I decided to pick up the Dummy Plan was because I needed a lens after only purchasing the body. At the time, the Carl Zeiss glass was asking far too much on eBay, so I decided to settle for the Dummy Plan instead. I did a bit of research beforehand and honestly didn't expect much, but I was happy to sacrifice a little loss of quality considering the price. I started the day by trying a few shots at f5.6 and then as the sun became harsher through the day I worked my way up to around f11 to f22. What's surprising right off the bat is how sharp the dummy plan is when compared to the Carl Zeiss. My first assumption would be that the Carl Zeiss would blow the dust up at the dummy plan left in the rear view mirror. And I've sort of contradicted myself in the episode before by saying that the Carl Zeiss was far superior. I've tested both these lenses in the past, and with the rough weather we've had recently when testing them, drop below f5.6, the Domi Plan couldn't even hold a candle to the Carl Zeiss. The Domi Plan seemed to really struggle and had an almost cloudy look when opened right up. Today, however, at f11 and upwards, it definitely held its ground against the Carl Zeiss, in my opinion, and for the relatively big price difference, you definitely can't argue with the results. There was moments where I had a tough time picking the two apart in this video but let me know what you think in the comments below.
So these particular models are equipped with shutter speeds of 1 1,000th to 1 30th of a second, as well as a bulb and the T mode. On the right hand side of the camera, for speeds lower than 1 30th, there is a self timer and a slow speed dial, which actually goes all the way down to 12 seconds. The design of this camera make it extremely desirable for left handed shooters out there. The winding mechanism is on the left, as well as the film loading. As a right handed shooter, this really hadn't changed any of my experience with the camera. It was actually quite nice to stabilise the camera itself with my right hand and fire it with my left. I noticed that another nice touch in my opinion was the depth of field button on the shutter. When you softly depress the shutter button before taking a shot, the exacto will give you a depth of field preview in your viewfinder. It's not always necessary of course, I quite often shoot my other cameras without even checking the depth of field, but it's definitely a nice touch. So here I tried a few shots with the camera in portrait, focusing the camera first and then using the sports finder on the Exacta Varex 2A, which is the only one of the two with a portrait viewfinder or sports finder. I often find that when shooting with waist level cameras, I always find a few compositions that will work better in portrait. Now if you've ever tried to tilt a waist level camera sideways and compose your shot, you'll know it's almost impossible without a tripod. One of the biggest pros to owning the Varex 2A is having the option to do that with the Sports Finder when compared to the VX1000. I still tried with the VX1000 and it came out okay, but definitely nothing to write home about. So the Exacta line of cameras are a Dutch owned company that were manufactured in Germany in 1936. The history of these cameras date back to before World War II when production first started on this line of several models. There's some really interesting history on the factory of both the founder and the camera itself. I won't go into too much detail in this video but it's definitely worth looking at and it's a nice piece of camera history if anyone's interested. So the Exacta Varex started production in the 1950s with the Varex 2A model becoming available in 1957. The VX1000 then came 10 years later in 1967, being one of the latest models with upgrades. Interestingly enough, the name Varex couldn't be used in the United States as it stumbled onto some trademark issues. Argus had already got to the name first, so the exact cameras were known as the Exacta V. So there are some noticeable differences between the two. Even though the Varex 2A is equipped with a sports finder making it easier to compose in portrait, the more modern VX1000 was designed with interchangeable viewfinders and a self-return mirror.
So welcome back, I hope you did enjoy today's episode. Um, but before we sign off, I just want to talk a little bit about these cameras. Now, as I said in the video, I really enjoy this style of shooting. For me personally, it's a much more enjoyable experience than using an SLR. Um, I know it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Not a lot of people like using the inverted, mirrored, uh, waist level experience. Um, and I can understand why, um, but for me it's never really been much of an issue. It's also getting particularly hard for me to justify why you should go out and spend your money on a certain camera, or why I think you should buy a certain lens or body. As you can obviously tell, I really love this camera. But what makes a good camera? Is it the quality of the build? Sharpness of the lens? Its performance based on its price? Or the feeling you get when using it and seeing your results? For me personally, if I enjoy a certain shooting style with a certain camera, I quite often pick that up over one that I know is technically better on paper. So for example, if I want to go out and shoot some 35mm film, it'd be quite easy for me to go and pick up my Pentax MX. You know, I absolutely love shooting the MX. Um, I know I'm always going to get good, consistent results. If I'm shooting something personal um, outside of YouTube, I'll probably pick up something like this, one of the exactors over the MX. Um, for me personally, I really enjoy using the waist level viewfinder in a 35mm camera. Especially for things like street photography, um, having a waist level viewfinder over something that I can hold at eye level um, is just a lot easier for me. Um, but that just about wraps up today's video. Um, if you have enjoyed, please give it a like and drop a comment below and let me know what you thought. Uh, if you're new here, uh, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, it really means the world to both me and Tom. Uh, as I said in the previous video as well, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up, uh, so definitely stick around for that. Thanks again for watching today. If you have made it all the way to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Um, we'll both catch you very soon in the next one. Peace.